to say that uh, we, we are extremely moved uh, to, 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 uh, to be here. Um, we, we, we've encountered an exceptional uh, disposition uh, to, to, of, of, uh, to, to dialogue. And and, uh, and and an extremely uh, fine attention uh, from the students. I think that uh, uh, this is one of the the, 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 the rare places where we uh, encounter today such an not only an attention but um, a a, a um, soif, you know, yeah. a, a thirst, a thirst for 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 thinking for. For another type of thinking, for another modality of thinking, for uh, an extremely um, um, strong, I would say, patience. So we presented a very long and difficult paper, and we never felt that we lost uh, at, at some point the patience of uh, of the public. Uh, we really felt that there was. Uh, Yes, a thirst, but also a, a need for for this type of uh, of dialogue uh, and philosophical questioning. Exactly. Yes. You see, yes. the EGS, the European Graduate School, has a very long tradition already. It's a young school, but it has a long tradition. We've heard about it since well, at least at least fifteen years. At least yes, fifteen years when when it first started. It has a long tradition, and I think. It is one of the places in Europe, perhaps beyond Europe also, where continental philosophy is subjected to a constant reinvention of itself. I would say, in a way, its tradition is the manner in which it looks at the philosophical tradition. And from this manner, which is always uh, um, rigorous, which is never, uh, never uh, uh, facile, never, never easy, which is a rigorous way of looking at the history of the continental philosophical tradition, and from this modality of looking back, of reinventing, reinforming, reforming, giving new forms to philosophical questioning, I think this is a singularity of, of the EGS. I think its tradition is that very modality of looking back to our philosophical thinking and projecting it into new manners of thinking for tomorrow. The students, I mean, the students are, as Raphael Zaguri already just said, extremely patient, extremely patient, extremely attentive, but, uh, but uh, they are also um, profoundly inventive in the, sense that, in the sense that they do not shy away from a multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary approach to philosophy. And this is a great gift. It's a great gift. It has to be protected because as you may know, the situation of continental philosophy, but philosophy in general, I mean, uh, is, uh, is in great peril in Europe, abroad also. Uh, so places like this need to be, need to be protected, need to be, need to be, uh, need to be nourished so that, so that we can hope for a philosophical question for tomorrow, for the present and for tomorrow which is not going to be the same as it was yesterday, and which will have to confront new dilemmas, new crises, new catastrophes, of which perhaps the past was not aware of, but where we will have to affront and confront for, 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 for today and for tomorrow. Um, I think there may be some immediate reactions. Maybe. So, um, Last night, uh, we presented, um, in a way, our, our common work, our, 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 our book uh, to come, uh, on uh, Heidegger. And um, 
I would say the question uh, of uh, Judaity or Judaism or the status of the Jew in Heidegger's thought. So um, I think, yes, yesterday we, we, we presented a part of our upcoming book called uh, Heidegger, The Privileged Enemy, L'Ennemi Privilégié, a book that will come out in, in French, uh, hopefully very soon. And uh, yes, it was for us one of our our um, first um, public presentations of this book, of this work. Uh, we've been uh, working on this book for uh, for a few years now, I would say uh, three to four years, uh, and uh, it was uh, an incredible experience, I must say. But uh, I, I think, I think, yes, as as Rafael Zagurioli just said, we we, we came to present uh, this this work, which obviously deals with the question of Judaity, Judaism, the figure of Judaism in Heidegger's philosophy, but also, I think, and it's important to say. Uh, retraced the status of Judaism in philosophy in general. When you study Heidegger, when you read Heidegger, you cannot dissociate Heidegger's thinking from the history of philosophy, what he calls the history of being. And so our question was, uh, in which manner is the Judaic or Judaism or the Jewish figure isolated in that philosophy, in Heidegger's philosophy, and therefore in the history of being or in what Heidegger calls the history of being, which encompasses the entirety of the history of philosophy. So it was a talk on Heidegger, on the Jewish question in Heidegger, but it was also a talk on, the, uh, on Judaism in the history of philosophy uh, in general. And I think, I think we can... We can uh, we can say, uh, given the enormous amount of scholarship that has been done over the last uh, few years on the Heidegger affair, on the question of Heidegger's anti-Judaism and anti-Semitism, I think what we presented is a very, um, is a very profound reading of the entirety of Heidegger's work, not only specified on the black notebooks or on a particular period on Heidegger's engagement with National Socialism, but really a general look and research on the totality of this work, reaching far back into the early 20s when Heidegger is beginning his philosophical career and where the Jewish question is, contrary to what has been thought up to now, uh, very present. present absent, foreclosed, leading up to even more problematic, highly problematic uh, positions in, in Heidegger uh, in, in, during the, the Schwarze Hefte years, the Black Notebooks year, but, at le but already in, in 1920, 1921, you have uh, uh, this, this, uh, this confrontation with Judaism and you have this already very uh, radical stance about isolating Judaism uh, uh, somewhere outside the history of being or the history of philosophy. Yes, if I may add maybe one, one more point, uh, a point that is, I think, important for us, wasn't that present in our talk maybe yesterday, but is important in our own work or in the book, is that I think we've tried to um, present something like the voice of a generation generation in that sense of um, generation that studied in France, uh, was formed into French Heideggerianism or uh, you could say in the French reception, exceptional reception of Heidegger's philosophy. French University, when we did our studies, uh, was extremely uh, um, uh, inhabited, yeah. you could say, by uh, Heidegger's uh, philosophy, Heidegger's reading of the history of philosophy, uh, Heidegger's accomplishment of the history of philosophy, and in that sense, the Jewish question becomes even more um, central, more um, powerful, uh, and 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 probably much more complex, and I would even say painful.
for us. I think this is something we try to say. Painful to discover that such an important philosopher, uh, which we still, which we think and and we want to think is still very important to read, uh, has such a um, stand, uh, maintains such a stand, if you could call it a stand, on the so-called Jewish question. So it's both. Uh, a, a book uh, on Heidegger, on Heidegger and the Jewish question, but also a book of a generation uh, uh, that grew up, if you want, uh, 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 made its apprentissage in this uh, in this uh, in this uh, reading of the history of philosophy. So um, yes, I think uh, that's also something. Uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a book that speaks uh, of our own philosophical upbringing of the painful stance that we have to confront and as Raphael as Raphael Zaguri already just said we believe that we must keep on reading Heidegger and I think one of the one of the uh, worst errors that we could do today in continental philosophy would be to outcast Heidegger or any other thinker for that matter uh, uh, because, because of what he says about Judaism. On the contrary, we believe that it is precisely because of what he says about the Jewish question and what the Jewish question reveals about his philosophy as a whole that we must keep on reading him. That we must keep on reading him to show precisely why is it, or to pose this question, why is it that the history of philosophy or a certain history of philosophy, or a certain history in the history of philosophy, a certain filiation of philosophers in the history of philosophy. Why is it that there is this almost compulsive need to produce an exclusion and to name that exclusion the other and to mark that exclusion by the name here of Judaism? To pose that question is very important where we stand today in philosophy and we certainly cannot pose it if we obliterate these thinkers from our, from our scholarship.